All right, so I'm Nick McKenna, and today I'm going to be talking about using the NSA Toolkit, which basically means using mass surveillance tools for yourself. Uh, and what that entails is basically two different schools of tactics, and those are dragnets, which are things that just sit there passively and either collect or inject packets, so they change what you see when you browse the web, or they will just collect what you see when you browse the web. Uh, the next set is called TOA, which is uh, Tailored Actions and Operations. No, Tailored Access and Operations, which is basically just hacking into things that, are, they, that a government deems high value targets. And those are done through methods like social engineering, using zero days, uh, or malvertising. And I'll talk about what all those mean uh, later. But for now, I'm going to start with dragnets. So, as I mentioned, dragnets are anything that sit there and collect what you're doing on the web. So they just sit there and they see you're going here, you're going here, and they see everything about you and they kind of build a dossier on you. And uh, because of this, um, because of the position that ISPs are in, which I'll talk about in a moment, ISPs are very important to attacks like this. Uh, and because of that, governments like to have very strong relationships with ISPs. So what is an ISP? An ISP is a, it's your internet service provider. So they take, you send, I want to go to google.com and it figures out where that is and it takes you there. And it returns everything and it gets all your requests as well. So why do they do this? They do this because ISPs are in a very interesting position because they are between you and where you want to go. Uh, and to illustrate this, I have, whoop, I have an example so now back to my original demo. So say that I go and I open iTunes. It will, as you can see, it will see all the feeds. So it'll see everything that I listen to. And that's somewhat interesting information for a government to collect. And they, they're, uh, and governments do collect this uh, from time to time uh, and use it to learn about people. And as you could imagine, if you watch all of someone's traffic for days or even years, you can learn a tremendous amount of information about them. Uh, additionally, you can also see everywhere that they go on the internet. Uh, so say that I go to my website. As you can see right there, it shows my traffic. But anyways, you can inject things into the browser and that's, that's one of the reasons that the position of an ISP is very important to someone that wants to do mass surveillance. So anyways, moving on. Um, so just to recap, the position of an ISP is important because you can see everything that someone does and you can inject stuff into what they see. So you can both see what they see and you can change what they see. Uh, uh, all right, so one example of this happening is something done by GCHQ, which is a British intelligence agency, and that program was called Squeaky Dolphin. It was where the government uh, recorded uh, everything that users did to try to figure out who they were and what they did, which is somewhat scary. Um, and to summarize, here's a quote from Chris Segoyan about it, and that quote is, uh, the UK government's monitoring of Facebook likes and YouTube video views arguably impacted a huge number of people who the government knew were doing nothing wrong. They'd collected bulk data and saw this as a way of getting useful analytics. So how they do it is two words, and they're not and they're not leap hacks, and the two words are zero days. So zero days, um, zero days are exploits for which there is no fix. So you can infect anyone running a service if you want to. Um, uh, so infections happen generally on a mass scale and generally only by very corrupt governments. So Syria uh, and other people that are trying to maintain control of their citizens. So this and it becomes very scary uh, what they'll use them for. So generally, it's used for more enhanced data gathering. So things like how you can, um, you can take all of someone's passwords with something called the keychain dump. So what that does on OS X is it allows for an attacker to get all of a user's passwords. And this is a backdoor left that uh, was put in by uh, it's unknown which government, but it, is, it was put in by a government. 
Um, no, here we go. Okay. So right here, I have something called Metasploit, which allows me to attack a target, uh, which I'm about to do. So this is the target, and right now I'm going to um, I'm going to run Metasploit. So. So right now I'm telling it just where to look for the exploit. Uh, so I want to look in. What? Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so these are a number of exploits for older versions of OSX. Oops. And then when I run it, it will uh, show a page. <laughs> um, damn it. Uh, I'm afraid that this demo is not working. Um, but basically what it would do is it would allow me to, when that machine accesses a page, it would allow uh, me to control that computer and make it do whatever I want it to. Uh, and that is something the governments have been known to do, but usually only for high value targets. Um, so if you want to learn, this is kind of just a quick recap of what governments can do. And if you want to learn how to do these attacks, I'm doing a demo over there uh, now-ish. Uh, thank you.